show you how I do some axle splining. Now we've seen it before, so first we'll see it, how it, what you've seen before. We do a little quick index here. Chop away. That's my homemade cutter I made that out of my 72 Ford Bronco axle. Machined it, did all the cutting, laid it out by hand. Been making axles, cutting axles with that thing since, oh God, over 20 years. So I got a little automatic stop adjusted there. It's just slide the axle out, mix it to the next location, bring it in, and ready to go. Now about now you're probably wondering how this thing's getting indexed so fast. Now I decided when I turn 60, I might as well start giving my secrets away because now everybody's using automatic equipment anyway, but Somebody's going to want to do this in their garage. So come over here and take a look at this sweet setup. This is a poor man's indexing jig. Let me loosen the axle up. Slides over. I got the end of this axle turned down to the root diameter of the thread so I can spin that around, put it on any spline I want. Then I always, it has a little rock. So the way I do is I pull it towards me and push the wrench away from me. That way I got the same, same push on the swap every time. Cut away. It's a ceramic bench so I don't need any coolant. Now somebody's going to say that a Involute spline has to be cut perfectly in involute, and I'm just using a triangle cutter. But if you actually graph it out, the difference between an involute curve and a straight line of a triangle cutter is only about one thousandths in the depth of that cut. And I never have a spline go. It's always a U joint or an axle twist. You never have a spline go, and I've been doing this for like over 20 years. Hundreds and hundreds of axes. So we'll finish this out and then we'll go into more how I do some indexing. Looks like we've got one more to go. You can see how I worked there a couple times, coming in close. In fact, when I'm figuring out the size, I put a cut on each side and measure it with pins. So I just put in one straight up, go around 180. Now I know I'm straight up, I can do other. Well. If you're doing an indexing head, you gotta crank that thing for an hour to get around, and you always have a chance of miscranking it. And this, even if you cut a spline in the wrong place, you can come back, get it in the right place. And you see a little bit of play there, like I say. Always pull this towards me, push the wrench away. Okay, last spline, we'll pull it out. If we get it right, this side here will fit. And if we get it wrong, I'll just have to go around it again and dial this in a couple more thousands. Now, I've mic'd it out. It should be good. But uh, if you've been machining along tonight, you know shit happens. There you go. That's the whole system. Let's shut this noisy thing off. See if we get our miking right. Let me go this end here. You know, it's a little tight. I'm gonna have to go around it again. I'll change this about two thousandths. You don't want to press fit because as your rear, as your front end or rear end goes up and down and flexes, you don't want it twisting the spider gear inside your air locker because it chews them up. So. But I'm not going to bore you with going around it another 30 times. This video is all about how I spline it. So, we'll come back over here. So the first time I had to spline one, I had some scrap aluminum pieces. And I notched them out so they actually are matched. Come here, you can see the little notch in over here where my finger is. 
So these are assembled. Wherever I put in the V blocks, it's going to be lined up. And this this quickly started to wear a little bit. You can see a little bit of rocking. And I figured I'd make some axles and then build something better. Well, you know what? It, it never happened. If I just put this on with a square. When it's square, then I tighten everything down. Now, the other end I did improve. My first ones, I used aluminum on both ends, but pretty soon the splines chew it up. Now, you can always take a new cut. So I got three of these. Now, let's look at this one down here. Let's see. I'll sneak yeah. to the other side. So this one actually dogs in the table in three places. It's steel. Uh, it doesn't move. And yeah, about once a year as things wear, I line all three of them side by side, tilt the head, and make a new set of cuts in there. But this will go anywhere from about a one inch, I can cut any from it, one inch up to about two and a half inches before I run into that stud. And I haven't had to cut any axles bigger than that, so this worked out well. All right, let's see how the uh, indexing system works again. So, all right, come over here. So I made these little blocks, like I say, 20 years ago, and they fit right inside between the yokes. And the plastic, the plastic little pieces actually fit and lock in a little recess in here. So this goes through and actually locks in. And then there's a little give. It actually works better to have a plastic flange on there because Sometimes different stock ones and uh, aftermarket ones have different thicknesses. But the plastic gives some give when you suck it all together. Sometimes these even get stuck in there. And uh, just stay right there. I'll be right back. So if the, if the tool gets stuck inside, I've actually threaded a little tool so I can, that's for the half tonner over here. And then this guy here goes in, and as you screw this guy in, that would pull. I guess we're missing a piece here. That would pull the plastic piece out of the ear because it's a pretty tight fit. Once it's in there, it's hard to get out. So that's my pull system. All right, so that, this chunk here was originally a Dana 60 side gear, and it took a while to whittle the outside down. Uh, hell, you can still see uh, some stampings from when Dana made it. Um, let's see. Let's cut, keep going here. All right, so that's the index system, and then other systems I've done, that takes care of front axles, um, rear axles. Again, all this stuff was made out of scraps I had 20 years ago, for goodness sakes. So this would go on a rear axle, and you just put, originally I wanted to put it on the, on the studs, and so they're countersunk, and I got several patterns in these things. I've done some, some metric one there, I don't remember what that was. But what I find out is that the Dana 60 side gear, of course this is a press fit, I can't get in, I gotta press it in there, it's tight. And then I've got flat spots ground on the gears so they can't rotate once it's in there. See that? Yeah. All right. So what I did was, amazingly, Ford 28 spline, Ford 31 spline, and Dana 44 30 spline, they're all the same size. Look at that. So, with two sizes and a little spacer bushing, I can do a lot of different sizes. And of course, if you come up with something you don't have, you just make another bushing to match. Now, sometimes I, when I put everything like a rear axle through here and I put it up in my V-blocks, I put a dial indicator on the bearing surface, it wouldn't be exactly right. So I just started flipping these around, putting bolts through empty holes and some washers, snugging them up tight. And then I put the dial indicator and tap on it until they run within a couple thousands. So that does that. Oh, if I'm doing a 14 bolt front axle, so they're a 30 spline, 
So I put my Dana 6035 spline jig in here. And then this again was originally a Dana 40, or pardon me, this was a Dana 60 side gear that I cut all this, the outside off of it. No, pardon me, a 44 side gear. I machined all the outside of it and cut 35 spline into it. So then I just put that inside my indexing system. That then locks in place. And that would come over here. I then put a, a bushing around this to make it the same diameter as the 35 spline. And I put the, uh, the Dana 60 front axle in there. And this then allows me to index a 30 spline axle using the same jig I index my 35 spline axles with. Um, let's see. So whenever I get something I don't have, I always make sure the customer brings in both side gears. Now sometimes I don't even have an axle to start with, but that hasn't stopped me. This little guy right here, I've got a couple of these where I just put a little nubbin on and filed a spline. Now I don't have his side gears anymore because he took them and put them back in the rig. But I did the same system. This clamped on the end of what we were cutting. And then that one notch indexed around on the correct side gear. And I've, I've come up with several of these deals. Oh, here's the, the inch. This is the same size as the, uh, the 14 bolt rear axle. So this is the actual one I'd clamp to get the, because there's a diameter difference. So this would be the one I'd use for indexing a 14 bolt front end once clamped in the V blocks. Well, that's my, my poor boy system that uh, it's been working for 20 years. So now you got my secrets and it doesn't take that long to make it. And I literally have nothing in the tooling except the time into figuring out the, uh, how to build the spline cutter. And I'll, I'll take some pictures and show you that. But real quickly, for the Ford, because the, the Danas are 30 spline, and the Fords and the Chevys and the Toyotas, did I say 30 spline? I meant 30 degree pressure angle, 29 and a half, 30, close enough. And the, the Ford and the, uh, the Toyotas and the GM are a 45 degree pressure angle. So, well, there's 45 degree pressure angle, which is half of a 90 degree. So this is actually a chamfer cutter I bought and it had a different base on it and I machined it till it had the same shape of course as my milling machines R8 collet. Took a little bit of work to do that and then even though even though as you can see it has a slight axial rake it cuts just fine. <laughs> so there's there's a, the other system. All right um, there you go. Have a good evening.